Hey everybody, Arnold Waffman here of Gear It First. Today I'm doing another quick tutorial for Pangolin Beyond. And I know I have uh, not really been so great about uploading tutorials, but I have been absolutely slammed, so hopefully this will be the start of a good trend. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about zones and um, the difference between this and, for example, your image size and position. You know, in reality, I try not to mess with this too much because it limits what you can and can't do with graphics. Let's use this as an example. So you can see here, let's say we have a wall. We've got a truss with a mirror ball and you've got two speakers. And I want to do graphics and I want to do beams. Well, if I make the graphics where they go only from one speaker to the other speaker, so it's framed nicely, well, now the beams themselves are also limited to that area too. If I go fully wide open, that's also going to affect things because now we're going to hit, well, obviously we're going to hit this whole area, but I don't want the graphics on the speakers itself. And that's where zones are going to help. Let's go ahead and take a look here. If I go into the individual graphics, for example, this Darth Vader one that comes with Beyond, and I go into my destination, I see that the selected destination is called Main Graphics, and there's a whole bunch of other uh, destinations they've made, and we'll explain that in a second. If I go to my Atmospherics, and I go to, for example, Fans and Beams, and I go to this one here, that's under Atmospheric Events. If I go to Hot Beams, and I click on one of these, I can see that it hits the Hot Beam Zone. Now, this is really important to know, because I want you to think of each destination. If you're a video guy, I want you to think of each destination as a video surface. Sort of like when you're mapping. You've got different surfaces, and then you can assign each video clip to that surface. This is essentially how Beyond works. Let's go ahead and take a look here into our projection zones. I went to settings, projection zones. You can see here the main graphics, and it's got a couple other ones in there, the targeted beam, atmospheric, and hot beams. We're really going to focus on main, atmospheric, and hot beams. So for the main graphics, we'll start with this one first. We can go ahead and click here, and ignore this right now, because I don't have any laser hardware uh, added to this right now. And now we're going to go into our geometric correction. And I can change the size by doing this, moving these guys around, or I can just do it with my mouse and keyboard. And I want my main graphics to just really sit pretty. Right there, let's go ahead and move so you can see that it fits nicely between those speakers. Awesome. And if for any reason you need to copy to something else, you can just right click and copy and then paste it in case there's another zone that you have to match. But let's go ahead and take a look at what else they have. The position here, I can actually change the position to where I want it to. So if I wanted to change that size and make it just a little bit bigger. All right, there we go. Whoops. Perfect. I can change my rotation. I can change my lin. I can never say this word linearity. Yeah, there you go. This is beautiful because what happens is not every show you're going to be able to have that laser dead on. This will allow you to change all sorts of different areas, including your skew, your pin cushion. So for now, we'll just leave this at zero and zero for the symmetry. You can change the keystone even. That's personally my favorite one, especially when you have your projector off to the side, right down to your pin cushion, your bow, your shear, and you can hit zero if you want to go back or just reset the item or you can reset all items. Now there's a couple other options including the freeform mesh but we're going to save that for a different video. Uh, so anyways we got that one saved. Now let's go into our atmospheric effects. Now for atmospheric effects which we already have we're going to shut this one off and we're going to turn our atmospherics and let's see here we're just going to whoops we're going to change the position and I don't mind if the atmospheric effects goes from one speaker. As a matter of fact, I want these atmospheric effects to go as high as possible. We want them a couple of feet over everybody's head, so there's the safety area. All right, we'll just kind of... We'll 
right there. Right there. That is perfect. Actually, you know what? Let's bring the... Right there. So I'm really happy with that. Now what'll happen is, let's say that I want to create another main graphic or another graphic area because I need a, I need to put maybe, let's say it's a concert and there's a DJ name. So I'm just gonna make another zone. And we're just gonna add a projection zone. We're gonna call it DJ name. Okay. Now I'm gonna turn that on. We're gonna change that size down quite a bit. And let's say the DJ is just right here. And right there, and there's a DJ performing. And I'm gonna click OK. Now, you can see that my graphics all show up where those speakers, in between the speakers, perfectly. With my atmospherics, which I, I have to copy that to the hot beams actually, so I completely forgot about that. But that's fine. We're actually gonna do this while the hot beams are running. So there's my hot beams right here. So we're gonna go to our projection zones. And what I can actually do is instead of just having to copy and paste, I can just go to my atmospheric beams, hit the Alt key, drop it on hot beams. And there it is right there. Perfect. Now we're gonna go to my shows here and I'm gonna use my quick text just to put the DJ name. Now my DJ name is DJ Crazy Ace. And I wanna have this graphic. I'm just gonna drop it right there. Oops. Huh. And I have this graphic ready to go. I'm just gonna drop it right there. But I don't want it to be in that particular destination. So I'm gonna get rid of main graphics and we're gonna put under DJ name. So now I have, for example, let's say we have some fireworks and I'm going to select my multi queue and there's my DJ name. So now we've got two great surfaces. Let's go ahead and get out of that for a second. Now, here's the problem that we are going to have. This mirror ball is a reflective surface. And I really want the beams to go everywhere, but that mirror ball is going to be in the way. The next video is going to show you how to blank out the lasers where that mirror ball is. Hopefully this tutorial helped you out. If you guys have any questions, comments, etc., leave them down below. Again, my name is Ronaldo Hoffman of Gear It First. Thanks so much for watching and God bless. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more like it, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Gear it first, honest reviews, incredible gig logs, lots of tips and tricks, and more tutorials than any other YouTube channel. I guarantee it or your money back.